Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last season of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, which right now, we are conducting a little bit of a border raid, or we're getting attacked, actually, by <clears throat> those over in what we would call Gorky. Ew, disgusting. Absolutely revolting. But we must do Tata horsemen. The Tatars, that now reside in our territory among the first finest horsemen in Russia. It would be a huge mistake to not make use of them. The formation and integration of Tata cavalry into our divisions would provide our army with much needed mobility without requiring even an ounce of petrol. Such a major reformation. Of an order of battle will take time, however, and some Tatars might prove reluctant to join the very same military they were only just recently fighting, but having such renowned and cavalrymen, numbering among our ranks will surely prove beneficial for any future campaigns we may be forced to undertake. In addition, the sense of unity that these efforts would foster among the common soldiery would go a long way towards progressing our efforts to permanently integrate Tatarstan. And for you to get slightly more recon, cavalry attack, cavalry speed, which doesn't really help us that much, but hey, whatever. We've got a couple comments to go through, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can defend well against Gorky. Um, I forgot that I did this a little bit off screen, just a little bit, you know, just played a little bit off screen. Oh, we can't pierce some which, oh. oh. There was a comment from the first episode apparently that I didn't read or didn't get to in time of making the last video. It says, don't piss off Gorky, they got a lot of tanks and such. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized that, yeah. <laughs> it took me time to realize that. Oh, look at this. Completely loyal. I need just to increase the number of officers now. Let's see, increase an officer, slightly decrease loyalty. Um, you know what, we could do decrease standards and then do higher pay. That might be okay. We could buy some infantry equipment, but now we don't believe in that here. So, more officers, now they're loyal, and then we'll do higher pay, should, which should be okay. Uh, comments. One person said from the last video that he wishes that the Reichskommissariats had more autonomy, they could do maybe a little more interactions with other you know neighboring countries. So he likened it to, hey, we actually beat Gorky, look at that. But um, he likened it to Lanius' legion or cohort in Old World Blues. Like, they're still dependent, the Reich's Commissariats would be, still dependent on the Reich, of course. But what if they could do their own, have their own intera interactions with other neighboring states and such and can do their own thing? That'd be kind of cool. Especially with the Moscow autonomy or, you know, even the Ukraine. Maybe a little bit of interaction, maybe even with the German sovereign zone. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Yes, we are very democratic here. Incredibly democratic, yes, with authoritarian democracy. But let's go over the next comment as well. Tata bravery. The soldiers of Tata stand fought well in the wall, but in the end our forces were victorious. Now before we march any further, we must work on integrating our new population into the government of Samara. While many former top-level officials will have to be gotten rid of one way or another, to ease the transition and reduce discontent, we will keep as many other pre-existing apparatuses of the old regime in place, at least for the time being. This will carry with it the added benefit of reducing the amount of resources we must dedicate to the new territories, allowing our focus to be shifted to more pressing matters. Finally, Zekov himself has proposed a campaign to educate our people in Tata culture, with the hope of creating a sense of understanding between our two ethnic groups following the recent conflict in which we get a slight bit more manpower. And something else that I didn't read. No, oh, secure control. Nah, I'm gonna just say bye bye. Alright, so we got very high negligible 40% efficiency, which is still not bad. And still integrating Tatastan and improve oversight. That wouldn't be bad, actually. Food for the civilians? Do the civilians need food? I mean, this is Russia. We already have 95. Uh, medical supplies, not bad. Actually, morale, military morale is not that bad. What happens if we keep going up and getting more goods that we can smuggle in? Is that possible? Discourage fraternization. Nah, smuggle infantry equipment. How much do we get every quarter? 45, 45, 15, 0. Well, we're not losing motorized too much, are we? We're, we're also making it, so I'm not really too worried about that. Actually, uh, artillery is the only thing that we're needed. We can't even get artillery. The luxury gets for the soldiers. Uh, that sounds actually probably like a good thing. I will do that. Average. And then we'll go ahead and cut down corruption next for when we do this up again. Hey, but it's average now, which is not bad. It's still average, but, you know, whatever. The completed Zakoff plan. Cool. Also, there, someone left a comment, and actually a few people left a comment, whether it was on the video of the last, my last video on this campaign, or in my Discord server. Apparently, the TNO Discord server uh, occasionally posts streams and Let's Plays of their mod in their Discord server, which I think is really cool. So, if you're from there, welcome. And if you don't know me, hello. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It's kind of cool. I'm totally okay with that. Totally okay. I love TNO probably a little bit too much. It's basically become my new Old World Blues. I play this at least once every single day, so... <laughs> I have a problem. That's alright, though. Oh, let's see. Look at that one. Hey, there we go. Abundance of officers and completely loyal. Love it. 
and after Tata Bravery, sabotage their tankerinos. The next logical target for our forces is the warlord state of Gorky, situated on a northwestern frontier and ruled by Nikolai Avalon with an iron fist. His gang of bandits is well known throughout the region for its fleets of tanks that allow him to launch raids against whoever he feels like with virtual impunity, but with over-reliance comes weakness. If you can train teams of saboteurs to infiltrate the city and staff factories, they can get to work chipping away at our next foe's one and only advantage. Broken carburetors, diluted fuel, mis mysterious ammo explosions in the dead of night, anything that can be done to deprive Gorky of its precious tanks. This campaign of subterfuge will not be an easy or quick, but it will. once it is done, the only tax that remains will be able to clear up armorless stragglers. Oh, look at that attack, defense. Oh, my goodness. Very nice. Now, can we scavenge for loot or raid other people? Oh, we can, I, I asked, and we receive. I love it. I want to beat other people up. Oh, we can't beat... No, they're already getting beaten up. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're attacking Gorky next, and we should do okay-ish. Well, goodbye, Order St. George. Goodbye. Wow, I need more manpower. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's cut it down to one then, maybe. Save a little bit more manpower for now. That'll be okay. And then gun down Gorky. The time has come to end Alvarez's tyranny and advance one step closer to the unification of Russia. Gorky's tank force has been effectively neut neutralized, and our own soldiers are sufficiently equipped to deal with whatever is left over. Many of them are yearning for revenge, memories of when the great armored beasts roamed the countryside of Samara, terrorizing the people and making off with the possessions still fresh in their minds. Now the beasts are dead, poisoned by brave saboteurs, and our commandos are predicting an easy victory against a demoralized enemy at a complete loss for what to do with, with its primary weapons neutralized. Or nullify. One general has even joked that there will be no resistance whatsoever, as the enemy will be too busy scratching their heads and wondering why their tanks refuse to move. Ah, uh, gun them down, gun them down. Uh, nothing like gunning down your enemies. Uh, we could do this. I don't, I don't want to hurt the... Oh, look! Reichskommissar Muscovine has been separated from Germany, hurting our smuggling network. I wouldn't say it's hurting us. It's actually improved. 45, 45, 50. 15, 60%. Not bad. Oh, there goes the Aryan Brotherhood. Goodbye, Aryan Brotherhood. A hallelujah. Ah, better... Oh, just in time. Better guns, yes. Inflict more damage on them, please. Please, please, please. It's not a, a good idea to do this when you're switching this stuff around, but whatever. Now, uh, you know what? Screw it. Screw the uh, corruption. I want to get military morale to be higher for now before we go to war. So, luxury goods for the officers? By medium amount. Food for the soldiers. You know what? People like it when you give them food, apparently. Average? So, okay. Now it's high. And military morale? That was another comment from yesterday as well. Like, Military morale, poor military morale. But now it's high. And we love it high. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, peace conference. Oh, because, well, that makes sense. So, uh, which one do we want to do first? Oh, we want to do this one. Rally the populace when we get there. So, the people of Gorky have been liberated, or been liberated from the tyranny of their bandit overlords, but our work is far from done. Governmental institutions are practically non-existent within the city, and the people lack even those basic social services. We must therefore work hard to bring Gorky up to the standards of our own hands and lands, demonstrating to the populace that we are on their side. So far, we've been distributing a portion of spoils obtained from raids that the bandits have so selfishly hoarded for themselves. The rest will be returned to the rightful owners, but this is only a temporary measure. To achieve lasting stability, it will be necessary to introduce the gifts of democracy to the city and villages that surround it. To say I have nothing... To say nothing of instructing the people in its benefit. Of course, we will st still keep a few guiding hands in place, but these will be withdrawn over time, upon which the people of Gorky will be finally be able to experience the fruits of their own labor. All right, boys and girls, let's go in. We're going to hit them trucks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, when they have such a debuffs. Oh, we can pierce their little booties. Mm. <clears> oh, <throat> Siberian Republic? Oh, wow, that was, they're the first group to do that, probably. Yeah, these guys are still fighting. Good job. Is that Tomsk? Yeah, it is. Lekhakyov. Dmitry. Uh, the Krasnoya Sormovo factory capture. We've acquired the Gorky Tank Factory, the largest producer of armored vehicles in West Russia. This factory is a vital part of Soviet industrial production and saw heavy usage during the West Russian War in the aftermath of the WRRF's collapse and fell into the hands of Nikolai Avarin and his divisions of bandits. who use the factory to pump out tanks for their own raids on Reich's Commissary Muscovine, an ignoble fate for such an important piece of military infrastructure. Tanks are rare among the warlords of Russia, making anyone who can produce them a force to be reckoned with, and making the factory a highly sought-after prize now that it belongs to us. We can utilize Gorky's tanks factories for a higher purpose than stealing scraps from the Germans. Regaining the capacity to produce tanks will be another step towards achieving the military capabilities of a full-fledged nation, and another step towards declaring a final victory in West Russia. The power of modern warfare 
unleashed. All right. Let's go and do Rally the Populace. I'm going to go and just, like, order if I can. Um, oh, oh, agricultural methods, workers. Oh, agriculture. I'm going to do it anyway just to get it started. we got to get it done as fast as possible. Oh, I just want to raid people. All right, so after this, who's... Actually, we should read the next book and figure out what's next. The false... Ah, Vyatka. Very nice. But secure the stockpiles, probably. Oh, yes. APCs and IPs. And unto the victor, the spoils. An old adage of war. However, in this case, it's not just us who are the victors, but many, all the people, all the many people of Russia, of which the former steel warlords of Gorky have now joined us. With these people, and soon with all the new free Russia, we shall share these spoils. What military equipment we find, from ammo to the great resources of Gorky, being armed the tank, or being the tank, we shall make use of it in our own armed forces. What sympathetic or even possibly loyal men that we have encaptured in the integration of Gorky will be assimilated into our own forces, and shall be a shining example of our dreams of a united and free Russia, ruled not by warlordism and regionalism, but a shared national identity and love for one's neighbor, advanced to the future. Which, I do want to prepare you guys for the Atka. We must fight over that river. Anything else around here? We can do this stuff. I want to get rid of that corruption next. And... Tanks? We have motorized. <sighs> I want armor, though. I really want armor. But we can't make armor. Because armor is expensive. I don't want to use IFVs. They're okay. They're not bad. They're just not great. Oh, and IFVs are actually over here. Alright, Central Europe. Good job. Wait, really? Are they? Oh, do we? oh, we don't even have IFVs unlocked. Oh, they're right here. Yeah, their armor is 55, which isn't bad. Just tanks are just a little better. Hmm... Let's go and do secure the stockpiles. And that's only 200 basic IFBs. You know what? For now, let's see if we can put IFBs on here instead, maybe. How much would that cost? 40? That's not too bad. And this gives us a, just slightly more armor. 6-4, six, 6-... Six, uh, that's not really a great battalion. A great division yet. Let's make it like... There we go. That's... Oh, we don't have enough for that. Okay, then. We're going to go back. I should just do this. Makes it a little easier for later. Um, oh, actually, APCs wouldn't be bad. That does help the armor a little bit. And give them more HP. And gives them more organization. You know what? If we have to do it like this, so be it. And it requires 200. So we have no one to spare, so this, these are glass cannons. <laughs> and we only have one division here, so... It'll be alright. Hopefully. Well, we're completely done with that, so we don't even have to see that anymore. After that, we'll open the factories once more. Following the capitulation of Avron's forces, the city of Gorky has fallen into our hands largely intact, and many of its industrial plants with it. Chief among them is the Krasnoya Slomodil factory, in near constant use since the Second World War, producing the venerable T-34. If we can put the factory back into operation, our forces would be bolstered by tanks and an advantage unmatched on the part of Russia, as attested to by the fact that the warlord who pre previously occupied the land was able to survive for so long. We will not make the same mistake as Avram, however. Our new armored forces will be integrated alongside the infantry and cavalry in a sensible manner, and new doctrines will be de developed dictating their use. We are not a patriarch collection of Bennets. Ours is the army that is paving the road to a new Russia. And now that we have the industrial base, that dream doesn't seem so distant anymore. Very good. Hey, remove corrupt officers would be kind of nice. But, oh, someone's... Oh, they're taking out Bashkurdistan, you say. Hey. Still, political power today is pretty nice. Mm, hey, 14 days for a Tata stand. Gorky takes so long, though. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should have waited. Oh, man. My chair and my desk are kicking like crazy. But a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm during December 1964. Eh, I'll do it. Why not? Uh, and, and as soon as I do that, we can investigate corruption. Of course. Of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's all right. I would like less corruption, thank you very much. Ah, muy bueno. And then the false saw. It has become apparent to us that our east lies a state run by another petty warlord claiming rule of all of Russia. What this, sets this one apart from the claim? The Grand Duke Vladimir claims himself to be the heir to the zone's Tsar's throne, and under God's authority, believes it should be him ruling the ruins of Russia. This is nothing but foolish thinking and the result of depravity and mental erosion. In simple words, the man is demonstrably insane and should be considered no less. It is our job as future stewards of a free Russia to end this and reinstate freedom and democracy in a state where it no longer exists or exists in any form. We believe that we can count on the support of the people of Yatka, despite what tacit support they may show for the false monarch. The power and allure of a true people's democracy will always outshine that of an undemocratic dictatorship. Alright, so let's go back and go here. I'm going to go three, because we're going to need more divisions. 
Especially, um, once we take out Vyaka, it won't be... It'll be a little slightly easier. I'm just a little bit worried about the West Russian Revolutionary Front. That's my uh, greatest fear, I would say, maybe? Or maybe the biggest struggle, we should say. And we're making APCs, actually. It's not bad. Mm, slowly, over time, we're going to be upgrading these guys, too. Will we have enough if we actually do this? Slightly more armor. Yeah, we will. We get even more HP. Why not? I like the Pokemon. Land of Freedom. Oh, wait. Did this auto... Oh, okay. From my understanding, Vyaka has retrogressed from the Soviet styles of communal ownership back to the semi-feudalism that was practiced under the old Tsar. Of course, of all the causes that rattled the people of Russia to rebellion, there was none so potent and powerful as the cry of the people's ownership of land. This is this sentiment that we will use to our advantage and the many leaflets, posters, and secret speeches that our infiltrators will place throughout Vyaka, reminding them of the old leftist cry, Peace, land, and bread. If the land isn't controlled by the people, Vyaka fails even more on the account of freedom. There exists practically no freedom in the state of Vyaka, with all orders coming down from the Tsar Vladimir. The people of Vyaka deserve far more better. They deserve the liberty of all, of all that of Russia deserves. And with that, we are determined to deliver it to them at the end of the gun barrel. Oh, so I decrease according time. Oh, then we go to war with them. Oh, that's nice. Increase civilian morale. Oh, we already... Oh, okay. Well, we already have maxed out civilian morale. Can we get over 100? Let's hope so. Actually, when I said the words Vladimir, I for some reason I thought Velomir from the Aryan Brotherhood. I, I don't know why. Just... My mind's like, oh, Velomir. It's probably because I was browsing the Discord, or not Discord, but uh, Reddit earlier. <sighs> oh, do you know? Do you know? Now, negligible, huh? Well, if that's the case, um, how is our anti-tank looking right now? Oh, it's looking good. Guns ain't looking too bad either, so we're doing really, really well. So let's go ahead, scale down effort. So I think we're at the max amount that we can do. Increase military morale by a large amount. 20. It's very high. This is great. I love it. Negligible corruption. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, well, I would definitely want to make tanks and such, but we'll get there. Very very high. Nice. Doesn't help us attack any better, but whatever. Remember February. In February 1917, the people of what was then the Russian Empire stood up for themselves and said firmly enough that that was enough. That authoritarian rule by monarch is cold as unfeeling as Tsar Nicholas would not continue. As his mandate from the people had long since expired, and that his cruel imperialist wars throughout Ru Europe that sent so many Russian boys to their deaths had to end as well. Today we fight for the same thing, and for that reason we must all remember February and the brave men and women who lost their lives in Petrograd fighting for it. We must not take his legacy and use his spirit to act, take down the corrupt regime sitting in Vyaka calling themselves the emperors and princes of Russia. We shall initiate an all-out offensive taking care to keep our troops as safe as possible to strike deep into Vyaka. We are sure that as soon as we can take the capital and secure and capture Vladimir, the entire system will collapse with LBJ. Seems like LBJ usually wins the presidency in most of my campaigns now. At least at the time of this recording. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just... I'd like to see something else. When do we get Gamer Wallace in? Like, I'd like to see Wallace. I think he's with RK, I think. Or Bennett. I don't know. I still need to play more American TNO. I definitely need to. I need to play more mods from uh, um, regarding TNO. There's a lot of sub mods that will come out eventually. Hmm. Hmm. 25 more. 25. <clears throat> Motorized. It's not bad. We're currently not getting any... You know, we'll, we'll as well do this one. It's average. Whatever. <clears throat> and then we got to save some uh, political power to core Vyatka territory. Vyatkin territory, one might say. Uh, where's my motorized? Are you... Oh. Okay, then. Ah, uh, shoot. Oh, you're fighting these guys. Oh, oh hello there. There you go. Hopefully that'll be all that we need to do. I wonder, ooh, if these guys win, Comey wins. It looks like they went, oh, no, 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 no. Zedanov has won, Libertarian Socialists. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, 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 no. Hopefully, we get all this territory and they get jack squat. All right. Oh, actually, you hold. And you go back straight into their booties and tell them to bugger off. I thought we were doing too much, maybe. Um... Oh, yeah, we have you guys here. There you go. We have some, what well, looks like maybe World War One fighters. <laughs> oh, boy. Are we using, oh, this is cast, too. Cool. There you go. Help out. There we go. Now we should win pretty easily. Uh, what is their speed? Ah, 10. Oh, is, has, 
Izhevsk mechanical plant captured after conquering the city of Izhevsk. This secured control over the mechanical plant, the single greatest center of arms production in West Russia. Izhevsk has long been used to pump out enormous quantities of pistols, rifles, and other small arms after the collapse of the WRF. Izhevsk and its factory became the property of Vladimir Romanov, the purported successor to Russia's late Tsar, who used it to build up his reactionary forces and play for regional domination. Now that the plant is solidly ours, we can use it for the same purpose in the Great Patriotic War and the West Russian War. It was one of the primary producers of weapons for a huge number of soldiers. We can ensure that our arms are armed with new, modern firearms, that while our opponents struggle to assemble outdated arsenals, drown them in a wave of lead, more liability, less production costs uh, for support equipment and infantry equipment, as well as artillery. Ooh, artillery plus 20% reliability. Nice. And more output. Go straight to Perm. We gotta end these tyrants. Despicable. Nice. Okay, those guys have been cut off. You guys keep these guys in place. And we got Perm. Let's go to Bursk. Ba 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 Bursk. Oh, don't lose Viaka now, son. I want you to hold. Alright, not too bad. Amber's will be ours. Beautiful. Alright, we got him. Uh, thank you, Comey, for wasting your li men's lives. I love it. Uh, it warms my heart. And uh, the true traitor. The grain with the. Oh, yes. Oh, good lord, yes. The grain for other people. Through our recent Vyatkin history, freedom has been an idea through thought of, but always more than a little out of sight, and certainly not something to talk about in public. And now the air democracy flows freely through the veins of the people, and for the first time in many decades, the people own the grain. With the entirety of Samara under the banner of liberty and equality, this is the same rationale must be used and turned to the fields. As our soldiers must be marched through the countryside, very few of the former landowners and owners will be found, and many of the peasants who had organized themselves into proto-communes, a fact that we must not take advantage of. But for now, let us forget the logistics, because now it is no longer just grain, it is the people's grain. Ah, oh, yes. Artillery, thank you, thank you, thank you. And aluminum would be nice, but we're still doing okay without it for now. Uh, if you like to know about black market arms trade, please go right ahead, but let us go and start coring some stuff here. Oh, boy. Yeah, that would be good. It doesn't matter. We're going to get it all done eventually. Oh, there goes my sheet of paper. No location set. Yep, that's all right. And these divisions that we're making are... Is it? Yeah, this one. And these are the 12 combat, which is okay. It is what it is, what we have for now. They'll do fine. Really, just... Oh, beer critic allies. Ooh. We lost slightly more political power. That's fine. Not bad. Oh, we can buy... Well, oh, yeah, we saw this. Good. Uh, cut down a little bit more corruption, but that's all right for now. Hey, not bad. We get six... Motorized equipment every month. Not a lot, but that's not too bad. Large scale exercises, more organization for infantry motorized and mechanized. And the entire army gets 0.25 more recovery rate. And better infantry weapons. Don't sign us up for more land out attack. How about that? Oh, we got a lot of war support. We're doing really well. Acquiring Vyatka. Mm, let's go with the true trader. With the liberation of Vyatka complete and the legacy of the February Revolution fulfilled, we're taking it upon ourselves to right the wrongs of history. Vladimir has been captured alive and was imprisoned in Vyatka under special military control until he was brought here to Samara to be tried for his crimes. Our soldiers now watch carefully over the streets of a free Vyatka where they, for the first time in a long time now, are getting used to seeing what democracy is like. Casting votes for representatives and important decisions is something very few remember. Supporters of the monarch have all fled, it would seem, to where? Who knows? And until we have to do, until we have to, who cares? Vyatka is free once more. In a dark room in the basement of a nondescript house in Samara, I like turns on, illuminating a scarred, bruised, and bloody face. Weeks ago, he's been fed with a silver platter in a state built by exploited people to be his personal body or bodyguard, but really his playground. Soon, this battered face shall be brought to the light and made to stand in front of a special tribunal to answer for its crimes. The last days of prison Romanov, well, are we really going to execute him, huh? Huh. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Oh, they took out these guys, too. we got to take out Comey quickly, hopefully, and, uh, oh, no. Well, it's not going to be easy, now, is it? Hmm. That's a lot of enemy divisions, not going to lie. That's a lot of enemy divisions. I don't know if we'll be able to do this. Um, if that's the case, I'm going to do this. We're going to have to use... I, I definitely don't want to lose Gorky. Oh, it's not going to be good. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to rush soldiers out then. I need soldiers in the field now. So, we'll do that. Oh, yes. Oh, we must have called Tata Stand. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna rush soldiers out now. That'll be good. Just gotta rush them. 
Low enough equipment uh, on their way out. Let's see. Yep, that's enough for them. Uh, Anti-tank. We're actually looking pretty good on a lot of stuff here, actually. Fighters? Sure, why not? Oh, tactical. Well, we are using castle already. I don't know about tactical bombers then. There we go. I don't like this. I don't like the way they look at me. But acquiring Vyaka. With the Tsar and his cronies gone, many important industries in the form of private serfdom are now in our hands. A Vyaka distillers was a project underwent by the Tsar's minions in order to please his demand for more and more booze and money. Before his distillery surely provided liquor for the Tsar and his men alone, now shall flow through our liberated territories where it shall find itself in the belly of a free man. To Vyaka South, its Hev's factories crafted many of the rifles that cost our men's lives in the campaign against the Tsar. Now that the arsenal's back up under our command, its employees will help equip the army that shall liber that liberated all of Russia. With his Hev's and Vyaka's industrial concerns are growing. Or war of liberation has received a shot in the arm. Right, let's go ahead and core other places too. I don't care about this for now. Scams for more loot because you can, and there you go. Very good. It's going to take quite a few times to get all this stuff done. And the last day of Prisoner Romanov. The sun shone on Vladimir Kirillovich's final day on Earth. The prisoner was not melodramatic enough to wish for a storm in his final hours. Such weather might have been more fitting as a coda to a life of exile, leading to war and then a troubled reign in the Russian anarchy. But the former Tsar did not begrudge the weather. It felt good to walk on a sunny day for a final time. His thoughts went to other kings, dethroned and killed like common criminals. He would be, his would be the fate of Maximilian of Mexico, given at least the honor of a soldier's death against the wall, but better than Louis and Charles, decapitated like common criminals. Far better than his second cousin's death in a stuffy, dark basement lit only by the flashlight of drunk communist gunmen. The sun shone on Samar, but not the warm, pleasant sun of France, where he had lived after the revolution. He had never known what to think of the vast gods of Russia had he had longed for while in exile. His opinion still eluded him as a soldier brought him to the wall. All around the place, scores of citizens of the so-called free Russia look at him, their emotions as hard as to read as Vladimir's own. Gunmen in front of him, hard to swallow. Vladimir tried to blink away the fear. Thoughts of Leonida, Leonida of Maria, perhaps they had made it to exile, too late to worry. Oh, yeah, flashes, then nothing, so sets the sun on the Romanovs. Oh, wow. Even more. Wow, look at that political power. Oh. Oh, what you're looking at. Hmm. But unfortunately, now we're out of coffee. Ah. So 80 is the very high number, which is pretty good. Um, Now what? I do want to save some political power because it'll cost quite a bit to core all this territory. So, yeah. Even though I don't mind getting more goods, maybe. I mean, we get more and more goods. I love it. Yeah, look at that. We're looking really good, except on planes. That's it. So, not bad. Uh, I will rush out more soldiers. You know what? Rush them out anyways. I don't, it doesn't matter. Because we need soldiers for this many enemies. Oof. Oh, can we find coming ground? Oh, look at that. If you like to read about that, go right ahead. Scouting Vologda. If you like to read about that, go right ahead. And then, acquiring a Vyatka. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that one. Very nice. The longest knife. No peaceful. Huh. Okay, or peaceful integration. Fantastic news, or you know what? We let's see. If we can try peaceful integration. Fantastic news. The men of Bologna have seen and reason and made the decision to put down the sword and pick up the pen to sign the treaty with our, which would formally transfer the lands of Bologna to our stewardship. Effective immediately, the flag of our national reconstruction movement has been hung from almost every building in Bologna, and the soldiers of our new combined arms march together in a demonstration unlike any other. With this unification comes a number of administrative problems as well. Among those in the Bologna administration are certain less amicable public servicemen still in high positions. While we may be able to make do with them, we can certainly expect that not all aspects of this peaceful integration can be as peaceful as we wish. Of course. And to Kosorama. Uh, let's see. A peace does not exist. So, while we have come upon the free city of Kostrama, while it usually sits as a gleaming jewel on the confluence of the west and east, today is a much different scene, as thousands and thousands flee the city. The route that only days ago carried countless riches from all across Russia to the bastion of civilization or carries only refugees and soldiers. As the battered defenders of Kostrama collapse like a dam under floodwater, our troops take hold, and now it is up to us to return the city to former wonders. While a sizable amount of our more weary of our occupation most seem to at least superficially welcome us, showing a general amiability to our soldiers. Control of Kostrama will be a complete game changer for a goal of Russian unification. The city contains untold riches in no spart small part due to its amazing location. From it, we can create a near monopoly of West Russian riverine trade, which we can use to supply our population much they would otherwise not have. Kostrama will be a boon indeed. Very good. And then, uh, let's see. Is this autocomplete? It does. So, if you like to read about that, go right ahead. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. And then, if you like to read about this, go right ahead. The false Aryans, of course. Oh, actually, there's the other part of that. So, and the nonsense. 
Cool. Man, we're just blowing through these focuses. Destroy their icons, of course. What? Oh, wait. Oh. They did not. Okay, so well, let's go on and we can read it anyways. There exists in Perm a virus. One that in Rex Commissariat of Muscovy in the common Russian knows all too much of, the scourge of Nazi idols. Swastikas flying from nearly every building and quite poorly done paintings of figures that one can only assume are Hitler and his goons in Permheim, sitting perched on the walls. This is a disgrace to the Russian and the people of Perm under new occupation demand that they be destroyed and the Perm return to pre-war status. Soldiers of a great liberation movement, including newly inducted locals, Rome Perm, being deemed as iconoclasts for the work, gathering large quantities of paintings and flags in the center of towns, a whole community watches and cheers. With the first step of removing the vestiges of the cultist Aryan Brotherhood, we are now able to remove the mental and political chains placed upon the resilient peoples of Perm. Equality for all? Well, we'll see what happens with that. Increase civilian morale even more? Equal rights. People want rights? Okay. The true measures of a country is the level of freedom in which the inhabitants live in, and the Hitler-worshipping Aryan Brotherhood. The true freedom-loving Russians lived under absolute control, with only those matter desperate enough to conform to the Brotherhood's depraved doctrines. We have put an end to this horror, and we shall replace it with the rule of law. Russia has only citizens, sons and daughters, equal to under the law. We shall teach this to a generation deprived of its fundamental freedoms, and re-educate those that have forgotten these inalienable rights. Mm, investigate corruption. Good. More industrial equipment. Eh, anything else there? Not really. Shortage, of course. Oh, look at We have six still. Abundance completely loyal. Warlord development. I suppose we could do this. I mean, eh. I do this every campaign. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to touch you this campaign. And that stuff is not worth it right now. Uh, fighting black market. Don't care. Purchase stuff. Don't care. Good. Reunification. Not quite there yet. So, enthusiastic iconoclasm. In which, actually, I'm going to go and deploy these guys immediately again just because we can. And we're going to train. Good. All right. So many years prior, the soldiers of the Russian Liberation Army had marched and fought alongside those who proudly flew the now universally known symbols of National Socialism. Today, however, they were destroying those symbols with great enthusiasm. Even <clears throat> the most morally questionable membership of the ROA, even though it was improving under the leadership of Zekov, the Aaron Brothers seemed little more than an almost inconceivable aberration. What was more, the stories of the few who escaped their lands told of nothing but abject horrors being inflicted upon those unfortunate enough to live under their government. And so, when the army had marched upon the Brotherhood in pursuit of its goals of regional unification, none had harbored any sympathies for them. They fought fantastically or fanatically, but they were horribly or horrifically outnumbered and in due time fell like every other enemy. Upon entering Perm, however, the true work began. Orders had come from Samara, everything that could in any fashion be considered. To represent either the Brotherhood or National Socialism was to be destroyed. Utterly. The soldiers, having seen ample proof of this previously rumored horrors, took took to this order with a furious zeal, and very soon, statues, signs, artwork, and other artifacts of all kinds that represented the cruelty of the city's foreign masters began to disappear. <coughs> With any luck, many of the soldiers firmly hoped the memories of, that, of what represented would soon fade away forever. Uh, just fate for such symbols of hate. Democracy returns to Italy. Okay, well, cool, cool, cool. What is Siano Galezio doing? Equality for all? Okay, execute their leaders. With the idea, idols destroyed and freedom reestablished, all that remains is disposing of the waste of material and food that is the leaders of these vile dogs. While no trials needed to see the extent of the crimes, and it is an appeal to our moral standards and strong belief in democracy and fair treatment that we will regardless try these men as Russians. There is no surprise in the room and the judge hands down the decision. Only joy. Minutes later, in a spe specially prepared room, the ringleaders of the A.B. included its leader, Guthrum Wagner, were shot by a firing squad of some of the finest Russians we could find. Oh, Baratia! Hello. Death to those who willingly trade their people for a false doctrine. Death to the enemies of a free Russia. Death to Germany and collaborators forward to a free and equal Russia. Now I'm just kind of waiting for uh, the WRR to try come kill us. And their lackeys call me. Mm, there's really not much else. I mean, I guess we can get more equipment, technically, but... Yeah, I suppose it would be good. APCs. We don't have that much army XP. I was thinking about making some of these guys 40 combat with, but... Mm. Nice. You know what? I'm, go I'm done pushing out any soldiers early on, and actually at this point, I'm going to cut you in half. There we go. Here we go. Because they're guaranteeing each other's independence, and this would make it a little bit easier to manage things just a shy bit. And who has the IFB? Because that's going to be important to know. Going to keep training too, and you shall be led by Senora Michaela. Uh, he's an infantry leader. Uh, he's an old guard. I don't like that. Vladimir Bayersky. Politically connected. Ooh. Oh, but why did that have to be politically connected, man? Uh, Vasily Malishkin. It's not bad. Uh, Malishkin, I guess you're, you're it. Welcome aboard. Anything here? Hero fighter? Man. Anything else here? Ooh. 
Sad guy. He's aggressive. He's very aggressive. Six level six attack. Nice. All right. I want to spend the political power, but it's so tempting to do so. Smuggle stuff in. Ooh, ooh, we might as well smuggle something in, right? Anti-tank, infantry equipment. Which one do we have lower? Less anti-tank or less equipment? Anti-tank it is. Because actually that's more difficult to create, so. Or to make. Or create. Either one. Execute their leaders. Ah, very nice. And the remaining threats. As we continue our march to liberate Russia, we can now see the light at the end of the tunnel. With the West Russian Revolutionary Front and its despotic bureaucrats gone, all those who remain are a little match for a nearly united West Russia. It's time to take the gauntlet of liberator of all Russia and complete what we started. We shall wipe from Russia the scourge of warlordism and disunity, replacing those that wish to keep Russia fragmented with those that yearn for a greater freedom for Russia. It's up to us to ensure that the idea of a united free Russia does not vanish from the face of the earth. Good, they get less war support. Muy bueno. Followed up with fanatical monks. If you'd like to read about this from the Order of St. George, go right ahead. And Christ loves all, of course. The Syncretists. Oh, if you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, this happens every campaign when we play as a warlord, go right ahead. But beautiful. Even more construction speed, I love it. But as Nikki's gone already, show them the way. <clears throat> and they're gone. Uh, Bashkiria. If you'd like to read about Bashkiria, please go right ahead. And exerting your hand. And there's that one, too. Oh, well. Oh. <clears throat> okay, we actually do this one. So, with the capture of Ufa and the escape into hiding of the government of the Islamic Republic that controlled it, it's now up to us to ensure that our liberation of its population is more than just words. While we speak so much about our noble fight against harsh Islamic law, oppressing Orthodox Russians, it would be more than hypocritical to turn around this oppression to the local Muslim population. For this reason, we must take or make amends from Bashkiria's Muslim population. A council of Muslim leaders, chosen by the Imams of Bashkiria, shall advise the new secular Russian government of Bashkiria, along with the Council of Orthodox Christians. This compromise will ensure that religious violence and decisions regarding religion within Bashkiria will be promptly advised. Oh! It's already time for the Indonesian War? Holy cow! It's already 65. Oh my goodness, I'm enjoying this way too much. <laughs> I'll show them the way, though. I guess I'll actually read this one then. Let's start sch schematics in the Brezhniki had the right idea in a way. Or sch schismatic, yeah. They uh, sought to mend the rift divided in Russia. They sought to do this by unifying Tsars and the Soviets. Their efforts were doomed from the start as both Tsarism and Communism are poison to the modern Russian nation. Only the restoration of a free and open republic by the ROA can peacefully end a decade of civil war. We will take in every former Mladorosi who understands this and have the rest thrown in jail, waiting for their trial. Uh, what was it? Communistic monarchism? Was it something like that? Monarcho-communism, that's what it is. Monarcho-communism when? Monarcho-socialism when? Loot! That's the most important thing here. Oh, are we getting... Yeah, look at that. Nice. Exercise, my boys. Oh, and how are we doing down here? So, industrial... Nascent industrial base. It's not bad. It's still going up by, like, 1.25. Okay, so that's looking better. Actually, oh, look at that. Manpower. Oh, I love it. Samara's actually a lot more fun than I thought they would be. I'm glad that someone recommended that we play them. Um, negligible. You know what? Russian industry. Oh, boy. Support equipment. Let's grab some more guns. And then do that. Because we can. <clears throat> Alright, show them the way. And then the fractured state. Of all the states of the new Russia, there's one that puzzles even the most who have spent the years of their lives researching post-World War II Russian politics. Let's say that being Comey. Comey, before the war, a gulag ASSR and a coal mining backwater became the site of a vibrant post-USSR political landscape with people of all ideologies struggling for power in the Comey. This political landscape. Oh, look at that! Yes, yes! This landscape has created a state so divided that we believe it will have little difficulty invading the Nord Torn nation. With a plethora of politicians in Comey, we believe that we will have little difficulty in fighting allies amongst the rivals. In doing so, we shall cement our legitimacy in Comey and able to bring order and political stability to a land so troubled by the lack of it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is nice. Oh, this is nice. You know what? If they win, if the WRF wins and takes the territory, that means we don't have to deal with the compliance, right? Oh, they can deal with it early on. And they get to lose their own men. Takagi elected? Nice. Alright, so we're going to be done doing this. Oh, how many soldiers? I'm. You know what? They were... Guarantee each, other, each other's independence. Ah, Zukov. Which still... Oh, yeah. We have 20... Oh, we're, we're going to storm their butts. Oh, I can't wait to... Mm. I'll get that cast. Get that cast. Hungry sets of Italy. Good job, guys. Uh, actually, keep it on three. I want to I want to focus on tanks. I really want to focus on tanks. And that's what we're going to do. Give me these... Not IPs. These big boys. I want a lot of these... Mm, room, room boys. Vroom, 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 vroom. Oh, the fractured state. Um, I suppose we can just go on in. Just go right ahead. Beat him up if you can. And none of our soldiers are ignorant? No. Uh, inexperienced. 
Yeah, that's the I word. And after this... Oh. Oh, well, they did that. Well, that sucks. Well, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. Oh, that's cool. But, the Western Finale. Ever since we crushed the remnants of the Soviet Union a decade ago, we've de de dedicated our time to surviving the hostile environment of Western Russia, growing our power in the region to become a credible candidate to pure, unify the country. Not purify. We're not the uh, Aryan Brotherhood right now. The West Russian Revolutionary Front, as it turns out, was not as, e not as defeated as it appeared. Our old nemesis, headquarters in Arkhangelsk, is once again poised to threaten the freedom of every Russian man, woman, and child. This time, we will not fail to grind them to the dust. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And we actually do that. Thank you very much. All right. Well... They took what they wanted, and it's time to rub up what we must do against these folks. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm feeling pretty darn good. After this war, we will, like, make sure that our guys are actually 20 combat with, but they're ready and good to go ahead. You guys are actually 20 combat with already, and we gave them recon, so that's actually pretty nice. Anti-air, the shield broken. Oh, I can't wait to play as big African state daddy. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, militia? Actually, actually, this gives them suppression. Did you know that... That uh, recon companies, I think, give them suppression. Let's see, maybe not. And oral blues, it does. Oh, it doesn't. No, and oral blues, it does, which is very weird. But if it doesn't give them suppression, there you go. Thank you. And I want to do this before I forget. This will save us some equipment too. So, uh, I could use no infantry for this. I use militia just because it's cheaper. It's really just cheaper, in my opinion. Uh, do civilian oversight. There you go. If you like to read about this, go right ahead. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, infantry, like, compared to base game, infantry, you know, they require anti-tank already, so. And because of that, I don't want to produce extra anti-tank just to put down resistance, which doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, there you go. It uses anti-tank. So, basically using just militia, which I just consider these guys militia, or, you know, light infantry. It's just better to use it. It's cheaper in my mind. Overall, it might be less effective, maybe, but whatever. Despite its inauspicious location in the frigid north, the front has access to a large number of men and munitions owing to its status as a remnant of the Red Army, and its soldiers are battle-hardened from years of war. Although we are a formidable opponent ourselves, we must exercise caution. It would be prudent to heavily fortify our border with the front to avoid being completely overwhelmed. The forces of the democracy cannot let themselves be squashed. I'm ready to go. Well, no, let's go war now. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to sail Arkhangelsk. We have adequately prepared ourselves to face the West Russian Revolutionary Front. It is now time to strike our soldiers. Stand ready to vanquish the last traits of the tyrannical state that oppressed the Russian people for decades and bring the country into a new era of democracy. This will be a tough fight. Their soldiers, misguided as they are, are some of the finest in Russia. To ensure that everyone can enjoy their fundamental inalienable rights, we must succeed or die trying. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Come on. Let's punch them in the gut. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready to rev up one of our engines and just strive and just ride straight into them. Ooh, power rate will increase. Well, poverty rate will go down by making this development go up. <laughs> I love poverty. Not really, no, I actually live in poverty, but whatever. Technically. Uh, freedom for all. <clears throat> in its efforts to flatten the differences between social classes, the West Russian Revolutionary Front flattened the rights of its people. An oppressive totalitarian state forces revolutionary agenda down citizens' throats and deny them the power to speak out against it or change the government for the better. Now that the ROA has exorcised, exorcised the specter of communism, this oppression is no more, or it will be no more. The Russian people will be the freest they have ever been, and the right to control their own future will firmly in their hands. Long live democracy, long live freedom for Russia. Oh, you bet your butts are going to have democracy, whether they like it or not. Actually, actually, how many... Okay, they actually maybe lost a division in that last war. We're going to go straight in. Let's go straight in, and you know what? You're going to fight them as hard as you possibly can. Oh, wait, do we have this one? Oh, whoops, my bad. Oh, uh, let's do this one. More breakthrough? Ah, just in time. Like, land an attack, more breakthrough, yes, please. Force the attack. Force them to die. Force them to, to kowtow to ourself. Where's our thingamabobs? There you are. Um, I want you to just go straight to... Oh, Sictive Cars, you're actually the capital. If that's the case, I'm going to hang a hard west maneuver. I could go straight for the capital, but I want to cut these guys off so it makes our infantry move a little bit faster. It's, doing force attack is not good for, you know, casualties, but hey, whatever. I want to just punch through their booties. Punch straight through them if we can. No, 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 no. You're not going to stop us, son. Uh, if you, uh, you know, I've already read the two Arsenal stuff. If you like to read about this one, please go right ahead. It's it's cool to know. It's good to know. But, oh, you still might be able to win. Uh, do that, do that. There you go. Locked and loaded. Nice. Anything else here? Oh, we can scavenge for loot. Oh, we have another 30 days. We can still get another upgrade here. Oh, we lost the Arsenal. That makes sense. Oh, uh, this is a really wild attempt for me to try to get that stuff. Uh, yeah, this is extremely wild. 
Just keep going. We'll do okay. We'll meet up later. <laughs> there you go. We'll be fine. Uh, let's see what those guys are. Oh, man. Come on. Let's just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Beat them up. Beat them up. They're just commies. Oh, they actually made a few more divisions. They probably rushed them out. And they're out of manpower. That's good. Good. If that's the case, once you link up, just go to Arkhangelsk. Oh, black market trade increases, whatever. No one cares. Why don't you go right there? Cut them off if we can. And we've almost linked up. Uh, you guys go right there. You just go straight up there now. And a little bit of lag. What's going on? Is someone breaking your parts? Don't go breaking my heart like that. Come on, beat him up, beat him up. We've lost 11,000 versus 17,000. Oh, that's not too bad. They're halfway to capitulating already, which is nice. We're not stopping this train wreck. Nope. Oh, hold. Defend. Oh, we got it again. Actually, that hurts our recovery rate and war support. But whatever. Locked and loaded. Oh, we got our Congress. Nice. Oh, if you just go right, is it here? Battle for Italy. Okay, they're done! Look at that. That's beautiful, my friends. That's absolutely wondrous. Uh, let's go and educate everyone here. I'm glad I saved that political power. I'm really glad I did. We don't, we don't even have to do that either. Now, let's go and do Freedom for All. And which we shall next do freedom of religion. And then we'll unify everyone here, too. So, we'll become the new government. The West Russian Revolutionary Front, in a foolish attempt at societal progress, placed severe restrictions on the orthodox face, the heart of a society. It substituted godless materialism for religious and democratic freedoms, making the Russian people poorer spiritually as well as economically. Once again, every person will be able to practice the faith however they see fit. It will leave the tyrannical imposition of atheism on our society behind. Pluralism with secularism. All right, and Onega. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, well, technically, that is true that we will have to kill these guys off, too. But, hey, whatever. Uh, yeah, we'll keep forming stuff. We're not going to do that. And we got this, too. Nice. Agriculture methods. I love it. Uh, remove corruption. I'm not going to waste political power on that, then. Uh, up next. Uh, the Arsenal. Hey, look at this. we got some copies here, too. Zavoyko. Zavoyko. Vlasov. Vlasov is still leading us. Freedom of expression. The neo-Soviet state in the Arctic was cold and callous to its people, denying them their dem democratic rights and curtailing their ability to speak freely against its abuses. Now that we have seized Arkhangelsk, we're going to return these essential freedoms to them. Everyone will be able to speak and express themselves as they please, with no restrictions, other than the great against other than against the radicalism that took place or took these rights away in the first place. And we have state press and replace it with censored press. We lose political power and we lose ideology, drift defense, but we get more 10 percent more stability. And there goes the manpower. Happy 1966, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. What else do we have down here? Anything interesting? Anything different? No? Okay. Just keep giving us our good stuff, man. And go ahead and train these guys, too. Actually, for this infantry, we have, well, only two of these types of divisions that are 20 combat with. Oh, my goodness. Suck to half you guys. You gotta be at least 20 combat with. We have not enough manpower for that. And you all are the 12 combat with. Will we have enough for this? Uh, we might, so... That's totally okay. Train to make yourselves 20 combat with at least. And uh, Leon takes over Breton government, huh? The Western warlords subdued. It has been done. Western Russia has united once again, thanks to our valiant men of the ROA and the sacrifices of our civilian population. Widespread celebrations have begun across our nation, as men and women celebrate peace for the first time in decades. Chairman Vlasov is expected to give a speech celebrating our victory. In particular, voice of the people and deputy chairman Zeklov is expected to receive his share of the glory for spearheading the reforms that brought us here. Of course, many obstacles remain on the path to unification. Many communists and terrorists still plot a revolt against us, and reports are reaching us of unification in Central and Eastern Russia. But, as long as Chairman Vlasov and Deputy Chairman of Zekov are there, the ROA shall march to eternal glory. <clears throat> I remember, like, I was, like I said earlier in this episode, that, you know, sometimes my campaigns will be featured on the TS, TNO Discord. Uh, <laughs> when you put the little emojis underneath, some people, like, wrote that I'm playing as a, uh, what was it? Luxembourg, because of the flag of Samara. It's actually, just Luxembourg, it looks like. Actually, what's, what's going on here? So, wait, oh, for this one. Oh, we have to be original. Okay, now we can switch back over here, then. Nice. Very good, my friends. Gorky is named Nizhny Novgorod, and... Okay. My friends, it is done. 
Western Russia is firmly under our control now. Samara, a democracy imposed at gunpoint? You bet your booties it is. Oh, request, finish. You know what? We'll try this. Uh, usually I invade them. I don't always want to invade them. Actually, I always want to invade them. Let's be real. I always want to invade. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll give them a few, two weeks to decide on their fate. We have point zero three billion and no debt. I love it. Another research slot? Very good. 1966. Let's grab some more civilian construction speed because we're going to need to build, build, build. That's that B word. We're going to build. Oh, wait. What happened to the soft? The judge? Oh. Oh, no. Um, do that one first. There you go. Oh, no. <clears throat> Overextended administration. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Oh, yes. I love this stuff, though. All right. So we want to hire foreign instructors for army, more army professionalism. That'd be nice. And let's see, weekly stability, seven. Actually, that's not too bad. 35 days is about five weeks of stability, right? Five times seven. It should be 35 days. So five weeks, 10% more stability, 5% more war support. Oh, poverty relief, though. I gotta do that one. And there you go. All right, we lost all that political power. Boost. And you can cut now, actually. So, judgment of history. The officer Andre Andreevich Vlasov was incredibly barren. He had intentionally ordered the removal of most luxuries from his office and his living quarters two years prior in a vain attempt to stave off his ever-present guilt. <clears throat> the old marshal stood looking out the window, a drink in hand. He couldn't remember the time. All he knew was that it was dark out. Midnight, maybe one, two? Who cared? The night was the only time that Vlasov could be alone. Every waking hour of the day, he had aides, officers, and administrators asking him for the most mundane of questions, but lately he's become disinterested in answering them, instead of preoccupying himself with a reflection on his life's work. What was it, if not the committee? And what had they accomplished? At what cost? These were the questions that resounded in Vlasov's de head day and night. And for the life of me, I can't figure out the answers, he mumbled to himself. He couldn't even remember if his alliance with the Nazis was one of pragmatic survival or the desire to see a Russia forge in his image. He barely had an image anymore. He continued to pace around the room, occasionally glancing up to the stoic portrait, portrait of himself that his aides insisted he keep in his office. A single word came to his mind, a legacy. What was to be his legacy? Blasov has always thought about writing a book, after all. Who else would tell a story of the way it should be told? The Germans remembered me as a traitor, the Russians remembered me as worse. Those in the West barely even know who I am. He stated to no one in particular. Realistically, no book would be coming. Vlasov knew he couldn't. After pacing some more, he sat slumped in his desk chair, looking at his drink. It had become harder to resist the urges to refill the glass over and over with a premium vodka he liberated for himself. He looked at the glass. It was now empty. What, when did he drink it? He couldn't remember. Glancing towards his desk, there were two items that came to his attention. A bottle and a surface pistol. A brief idea crossed his mind, but common sense got the better of him. He said he would retire for the night after a long, deep sigh. The curtain draw closer to the chairman's career. Oh boy. Oh boy. Vlasov, you better not do that. We need you to... Hey, we changed our flag. Actually, that's not... Hmm. It's not a bad flag. Hey, maybe we won't look like Luxembourg for too long then, maybe. Very, very nice. And now Finland requests our terms. The Finns are somewhat receptive to talks. Our ambassador informs us that Helsinki has agreed to a high-level diplomatic conference between our two nations. It is pleasing that the Finns have not done anything rash and have at least agreed to give us some time to make demands. Some cynics in our government suspect Helsinki of merely stalling for time to order a full mobilization. The fact remains that war can be avoided before anything else, however. Helsinki wants to know our terms. Onega must be returned to us as population freed from the janissary duty for Finland. That much is essential. This does not mean, however, that the Russo-Finnish frontier should remain a dagger pointed at Finland's heart. We could simply demilitarize militarize Onega and, and sign a non-aggression pact for, for, for the foreseeable future. The Finns would probably accept such a deal, and Helsinki would likely see it as too good to be true. Thus, a better deal would be return of Onega in full, with the troops in the region. Eastern Karelia will also be integrated to Russia as an autonomous region, with the Finns granting us an open border into the region. This would return us to the Arctic port of Murmansk. Southwestern Karelia and its critical city of Valborg or Vipurium, Finnish, would stay under Helsinki's control. Demilitarized zones and non-aggression treaties will follow, preventing any future war between our peoples. Of course, we could just demand it all. No matter how attached the Finns are to Valborg and southwestern Karelia, the paltry army cannot save them for long. Onega's ramshackle mob of conscripts will not slow us long, if they choose to fight the countrymen at all. And the Finns will agree to our demand for Onega and all of Karelia, or pay their, for their arrogance. Uh, Onega's return. Murmani. I want all of our stolen, ter stolen territories back. Before we click on that, we need to read uh, our next focus, of course. But let's take a look at this. Conserve democracy, 85, 95,000. No, well, I want all the territories back. No. If, if they're going to be that weak, then no. The death of Vlasov. Wow, okay, he just dies. Earlier this morning, General Andrei Vlasov, the founder of our movement, was found to have died peacefully in his sleep. 
in poor health for many years. Vlasov was well aware of his own mortality and in order to prevent disorder and confusion following his last event, previously declared his favorite successor in the so-called secret speech to the, ten to the then committees assembled officer court. That successor had been informed of Vlasov's passing and the con continuity and transition procedures previously written by Vlasov's office had been put into effect. A complicated man, Vlasov leaves behind an equally complicated legacy of both collaboration as well as liberation, and it's not clear of how his past actions will be remembered in future years. Regardless of such future perceptions, however, the state he founded in the aftermath of the WRR W provided us with the foundation necessary to achieve regional unification, and they should not and not, will not be forgotten. Whilst our successor now, or you know, Zykovs, will now face a daunting task of not strengthening only our control over a region where many perceive us as illegitimate, but also preparing us for the conflicts as we come as we pursue our ultimate goal of liberating all of the peoples of Russia, from Europe to the Far East. We hope they rise to meet the challenge. Zykov assumes overall political authority. We get very high civilian morale and very high military morale. Nice. Decrease civilian morale by a very large amount. Oh boy. Hey, but new focus right now. Oh, poor Vlasov. Interesting fellow in the real life. Ah, uh, Chairman Vlasov has died. Funerals are being prepared in the capital, and a national week of mourning has been declared throughout the nation. Even more important, however, is to assure the stability and order the orderliness of the transition. Our army, despite triumph throughout Western Russia, is badly overstretched. Vast amounts of territory are being managed by officers and dubious loyalty uh, of dubious loyalty to the new chairman. Even more disquieting are the rumors of revolts against the rule. Communist remnants, ethnic nationals, and other agitators are suspected of moving weapons in around in preparation. We must be vigilant. And we've got this stuff going as well. And this stuff, high average. Oh, the long dawn. I'm still integrating other places. Cool. Zakov was the first to hear the old man's passing, a quiet and peaceful end of the night, the doctor said. Better than he deserved, according to many, but Zakov wouldn't hear of that. Today would be a day for mourning, and whatever the chairman's fault, he was still the liberator of Western Russia. Regardless of whether the people would accept the truth, Z Zakov would have spoken it. <clears throat> When the time came to bury Vlasov, it came on a cold, rainy day. First, there was a procession through Samara, with the guard of honor flanking the general's hearse. Thousands lined the streets, as was their duty, but stayed no longer than expected. Second came the service. After Zekov, Bunachenko, Oktan, and Meandrov bore the coffin up the steps of the rebuilt cathedral of Christ the Savior. All spoke in German, Meandrov of his victories, Oktan of his strength, Bunachenko of his dedication, and last was Zekov who spoke of the general's dream. For a brief few minutes, the officers and civilians back in the pews forgot their treasonous origins, thinking only of the brilliant tapestry woven by the mysterious men of from Ukraine. A flag of the ROA flew at half-mast from Samara to Akongosk, the blue cross reminding all beneath it who had given them a second chance at sovereignty. Though they were few, there were those who saluted their own accord, dotting their hats in a moment of silence for the passing of a humble giant. Most of Russia would never forgive Vlasov for his actions, but Zykov, as he sat the general's old office, at his as he sat at the general's old office and raised his solitary toast to the old general, expressed his thanks for standing by his people to the end. The night is darkest before the dawn. Cool. We will invade if we have to. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Too bad this stuff went down. And right now... Oh, Zetkov is there. And they deny our, command, our demands for Karelia. The Finnish negotiator has been giving our demands and issued the response. They accuse us of planning to destroy the Finnish nation and to dismember uh, them by peaceful means. The purity, as they say, as well as Karelia, is rightfully Finnish and shall not be controlled by our government, which they claim has proven to be overly revanchist and a, a threat to peace. With this, all hopes of settlement has ended. There is not to be a peaceful solution to the Karelian question, rather the matter must be settled by force of arms. The other tanks take the field and the spoils go to the victor. To war, so be it. They've chosen the fate. And we do have a little bit of debt, which is unfortunate, but whatever. The last death of the last off. The general staff assembles. The old and conscripts have been busy on the borderline, or borderland, digging trenches and settling into their forward positions. Ever since we've left the peace docks, the Onegans have followed their master's biddings and begun preparing for all at war. It is regrettable that we must fight our Russian brothers, but the Finns' arrogance has brought this upon us. The general government's, or the general staff's analysis, predicts a rapid class of the Onegan militia beyond them. The lakes Onega and Lagoda create a choke point between the Finns and tend to defend bitterly. A rapid breakthrough followed by a push into eastern Karelia will bring the Finns to their knees before the full immobilized war is them. And our soldiers are pretty much fully ready to go. So be it. Finland, we gave you an, a choice. And you said no. So we must do what we must. Actually, I want you guys to go there. There you go. So be it. Oh, there goes Austin. That part of Austin, I guess. Cappy Flow, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. A toast to our future successes. Muy bueno. And now I should probably not have cut down the budget, but whatever. And they're gone. Cool, break over the road, get to Kemi as fast as possible. Absolutely instrumental in defeating the Finns. We gave them the peaceful option. They said no. So we must kill them. We must destroy them utterly. We shall at least attempt to burn Helsinki to the ground. 
Move, 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 move. Get over that river. Still no fins, eh? Oh, I found some fins. Kill them. Cut them all off if we can. Uh, actually, you still go down here. I want to get to Jonsu. Vipuri? Yes, please. Go, 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 go. They still have up to 11 divisions. Not bad, not bad. Fight them, kill them, every single one of them. They must learn their place in the world. The death of loss of them. But additionally, friends and enemies. All suspicions were correct. All the rebels rising up against our rule in several sectors, claiming that our authority is non-legitimate. Only a strong communication blackout has managed to prevent the widespread of civil disturbances in our biggest cities. This setback risks turning into a catastrophe as several ROA units are mutinying against the new chairman. Contradictory reports that the soldiers are simply asking for better pay and for an end to the war time discipline, or that they refuse to serve the new chairman make it difficult to ascertain the scale of the problem. We must act quickly. A contingency plan to secure the capital must be put into effect. Traitors must be rooted, rooted out rapidly. And I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Reunification of Russia, we can close that for now. Anything else? Not really, no. Oh, good, good. Oh, we have no debt again. Great. Move, 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 move. How many have we killed? Only 4,000? That's not enough. The Finns must learn their place. That's actually much... This is probably one of the easiest time I've taken out Finland so far. Of course, then again, I mean, they, they said no, and they weren't ready for war, so... It is what it is. Get to Vipuri. Go, 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 Helsinki? Nope. I'm not even going to read that. How dare you demand, a, you know, ask for a ceasefire after we gave you that option. We literally gave you that option, and you said no. Pathetic. Ah, Pavel. Infantry expert, of course. He leveled up. Nice. Anything else? Not too much. That's fine. Ah, friends and enemies, chairman, the reports are much worse than we fear. Several villages and towns previously under our communist control. Have risen up in revolt against the ROA. There are also tensions brewing in ethnic minority areas. Many locals see the death of General Vlasov as a signal of internal weaknesses within our government. This angry rebel may be more correct than it suspects, as our military position is failing in many districts. Death of Commander Vlasov has sparked a storm of rumors that now descended upon both soldiers and our officers. Some units refuse our orders, claiming that, our, that your position as chairman is illegitimate. Other garrisons have simply gone silent, falling, failing to reply to our transmissions. All hope is not yet lost, our chairman. It is likely that much of the confusion within our ranks can be dispelled by loyalist units. We can address discontent amongst the troops with minor reforms, such as increased pay or longer permissions, now that the wars of unification are complete. As to the remaining mutineers, they will be crushed, with their responses will be smoked out. We will make sense of this. We must act quickly. Ooh. Average military morale. That's not good. I'm not going to click on that yet, though. And by the people. Chairman Zakov has long suspected treachery from the corrupt insiders of ROA. We must now help them launch a counter-coup. Loyal ROA units are moving against anti-democratic officers in several other cities. Meanwhile, loyal citizen militias are monitoring movements across the major roads, paralyzed and unable to con contact one another. The mutinous garrisons are expected to fold one by one. High and average is still going to get lower. And sports rivalry. Uh, well, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. Um... Uh, this happens usually every time in, when you play in Western Russia, so at least it's better than shooting at each other. Cool. Hey, look, an encirclement. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Good. You're not allowed to move. Nope. I I'm not going to read it. I'm, I'm sorry if you wanted to read it, but I'm, I'm not going to play around with these pieces of garbage fins. Are you kidding me? Like, seriously. Uh, let's go to Turku. And we took Helsinki, so, I mean, we're doing really, really well. These guys had the chance to have peace. And they said no. So, I would like them as a puppet state at this point. Oh, I want more. I want more war. I want to get rid of these peoples. Uh, I don't think we can move fast enough for us to fully annex them, can we? Oh, that'd be so cool if we could. That would be so cool if we could. Eighty percent. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Build defenses. By the people for. Are we not all brothers struggling together for unification? Have we not fought shoulder to shoulder, side by side, in the trenches for years? If you lay down your guns now, our movement will be saved, and no one will be hurt. I can promise that much. Remember, men, struggle not against your family, but against those who wish to take it away. 
Today, Zekov took to the air to announce the end of the mutinies and encouraged the few still in arms to give up, offering amnesty to all those who were not directly involved in instigating the mutiny. The path to end the mutiny and prevent the implosion of the ROA into a civil war was engineered masterfully by the veteran propagandists, who seemed to perfectly recall the tenets of Machiavelli preached centuries ago. Zekov had bribed all those who could be bought, talked down those who could be talked, and threatened violence upon those who could not be satisfied with either. The combination worked, and if only barely armed, confrontation was reserved for to a few hardcore mutineers who utterly refused surrender. All of these facts and an aura of relief brought by them were now swindling or swirling around the heads of the committees by which Zekov now stood in front of. The enigmatic orator had given a courtesy briefing on the situation and its follow. However, this coup de grace was yet to come. As I'm sure if you're all aware, it was perfidious Octan who organized and financed this mutiny against the authority of our dear chairman. For most, that was a surprise. The truth of the situation was that Octan had nothing to do with the revolt, but Zykov knew an opportunity when he saw one. Indeed, it is clear, at least to me, that we can no longer tolerate rat-like insubordinates in our ranks, no matter how entrenched in favors they may be. Zykov looked around the room, his cool gaze analyzing each member. He was confident in their vote. One by one, each consented to Octan's arrest. Very well. It, if it is the will of the committee and our dear chairman, I will gladly order the arrest of Octan and a subsequent trial. Octan will not, in fact, get a trial. After his arrest, during which he made no small protest, was taken to a small barn near the outskirts of Samara and given a sentencing similarly to being shot. His body was burned in a hut backyard, and that was the end of M Muktan. Oktan, I should really say. Can we move faster, 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 please, 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 move, move, move. I want to capitulate them. What are you doing? Get over here to Olu. Oh, actually, if you guys can get up to here. How many more days do we have for this? Oh, only two days. No, I want to take them out. Ah, for the people. The soldiers are back down, leaving their officers to their fate. This leaves the matter of the civilian resistance. We have been accused by our opponents of being soft, sentimental types. That Chairman Zykov would merely advocate all power to the masters. Nothing is further from the truth. If Russia is to become strong and free, n no one must be able to dictate her actions. An ultimatum has been sent to the rebels. Those who do not stand down will see the wrath of the ROA. We hope that they survive long enough to understand the errors of their ways. We were so close to greatness. 96% of the way there. Oh my goodness. Take him, take him, take him. No, no. No! Oh, we're so close! We're so close! Ah! No! We're so ah! <laughs> that's frustrating! Oh, we were so close to taking him off! Ah! Yeah, we need more artillery now. God dang it. Let's read one more, folks, and then we'll be done with this episode. Good crush. I mean, hey, the Finns wanted this. They literally wanted this. And we can't even integrate Onega. Oh, that's so high on average. Not bad. Do we still get oh, we still get stuff for the people? Outside of a small village, about two and a half hours' drive from the city of Samara, lay in a pile roughly 30 dead bodies. Well, over half of them were wearing the ROA's uniforms, the other dead were clearly partisans. The confrontation between the partisans and the local patrol had taken place when a routine inspection of the village led to the discovery of weapon caches, partisans hiding in plain sight. The firefighter then suits all of the parties, partisans killed, but most of the patrol as well. The dead ROA, which featured kids as young as 16, were sorted into one pile with another, far more uncouth for the dead partisans, mostly young men and women. Vlasov, who was shocked to hear that there was such a coherent piece of communist resistance so close to the capital drove himself to see the aftermath. Well, he's dead already. Accompanied by two of his bodyguards, they examined the carnage after personally ordering the surviving patrol members to not exact revenge on the surviving villagers. One of the bodyguards, Belichkin, was pers a personal confidant of the old general. He could tell that for the first time in a long time, Vlasov was filled with emotion, even though he's dead, and none of it was good. His mouth formed into a tight-lipped grimace as he walked throughout the village. An explosion of anger eventually brought the usual laconic general into a yelling fit, shouting at the pile of dead partisans. Who do you think that you could do what you try to do? He asked in the pause. Was he waiting for a response? I've worked years, no decades, to bring about a Russia free from communism, free from tyranny. All in, And all of you who so stubbornly resist my efforts, indoctrinated by the dudes I beat years ago, you wasted your lives of brave young men who fight my good fight. Belokchin was stunned. He looked around, villager and soldier alike froze, observing the marshal's outburst. Glancing towards his fellow bodyguard, he slowly approached Vlasov, who had then saw, since then fallen silent. Careful not to touch him, Belokchin, Belokchin quietly whispered in the ear. Perhaps my chairman, it's time for us to go. I'm sure you need it back in tomorrow. Well, he's dead. Uh, he weakly agreed. The drive back to the capital was a very quiet one. Uh, last bit of passion from the tired old man. Well, he's dead. But let's conclude with the ROA fights on. It was never. It was a near run thing at time, but we've beaten back the opposition. The aftermath, of course, was not pretty. Plenty of soldiers are dismayed to know their comrades took up arms against the state. Former mutineers that have received pardons still I still I our authority with contempt. And out there in the provinces, many civilians are just now understanding that our government came very close to being toppled. More resistance can be expected in the future both from disgruntled ROA soldiers and officers, as well as civilians who loathe our government. Now, no matter what, however, the ROA fights on strong and unbroken, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, when we shall entrench our rule and watch the world burn around us. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.